Hey guys, if you own a Trek Slash and this is a familiar site, you wanna stay tuned for this quick little video. They've recently announced a service bulletin about the chain dropping issues on the new high pivot slash. So today we're gonna to show you guys what that entails and what little part might be missing in your bike that could hopefully solve all your problems on the trail. Stay tuned. So you may have seen some reviews about people wanting to throw their bikes in the dumpster or whatever else might happen uh, because of some chain dropping issues. Um, I will say that we have had this bike for about six months. We have dropped the chain a total of three times so far, twice from the bottom and once from the top. Um, we are just about done with our long-term review, which will be coming soon, so stay tuned. But today's video is going to be talking about the service bulletin that Trek has just released addressing some of the chain drop issues. So really quickly, what we're gonna do here, take our little eight mil Allen, we've already pre-loosened this, um, pull the crank off. That's not needed on all bikes, but uh, with the SRAM crank, it is definitely needed to access the chain guide. So essentially what Trek has found is that most of their bikes were only shipped with a five millimeter spacer here between the ISCG tab and the chain guide. And what the service bulletin says Trek is actually calling for is seven millimeters of spacers. So there should be one five mil spacer and then two one millimeter spacers for a total of seven mils out from that ISCG tab. For Shimano or SRAM non T-type drive units, six millimeters of spacing is optimal. Uh, another thing to note is going to be the distance from this idler to the bottom of the chainstay protector. Uh, they're calling for 32 millimeters of spacing. Ours is actually at 28 mil. Uh, we measured it there actually a little bit under 28 millimeters. So pretty significant difference there. And also Trek is shipping a updated longer toothed idler to Trek dealers for them to install or for you to pick up. Um, no charge at all, but it'll just have a little bit longer, more engaging teeth here and it, make sure you check that spacing. So let's pull off our chain guide real quick and show you how many spacers we've got and what Trek is calling for. Okay, so as you can see here, we have a single five millimeter spacer uh, on the back side here. So we are in fact out of spec. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the reason was, but uh, I guess all that matters is it's supposed to be seven millimeters and it is five. So you can use any one millimeter spacer. Uh, if you have some lying around, we're sharing the Trek service document with you guys here so you can check it out. Uh, it gives you OD and ID, outer dimension and inner dimension measurements, um, as well as uh, any other information. If not, you can also contact MRP or hit up your local Trek shop as they probably will be getting quite a few of these in stock to make these fixes. So essentially what we're gonna do is just add two one millimeter spacers since we've got the T-type drive unit here put that back in and then make sure we clock that in the correct position where we get 32 millimeters, put our cranks back on and uh, cross our fingers. We should be all set. So thank you guys for watching. We'll link down below to the Trek service doc that you can check out on our website. Uh, hit up your local Trek dealer for any other questions you might have or if you wanna go pick up an updated wheel. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel for lots more fun videos tech tips and how-tos, and stay tuned for the long-term review on The Slash. Thanks.